in 2018 in March, myself and five or six other guys from the park with some contractors had to install the three sections of the track in that tunnel so that they could put a cement cap over it and finish the landscaping to turn it into an actual tunnel. So we've actually been working on this since the winter of uh, 2018. how the coaster gets to the top of the lift though. Chain lift. There's a chain. Okay, we're going to go look at the uh, lift drive. There's a chain that uh, engages, the train engages onto a chain. The chain pulls the train to the top of the hill and then gravity takes over. It, it overspeeds the hookup point and travels away from the chain. But for the drop, we also have a chain. It's the same theory in reverse. So the engagement hook, called a chain dog, for going uphill, they have the same type, it's reverse, and it engages into the drop chain and it allows the coaster to go over the drop and then the drive comes to a stop for three seconds. And the driver uh, sends the train down the truck. So, how big is the chain? Does anybody care about stuff like that? Yeah. How do we measure chains? Um, by lengths. Sure. The pitch, the pitch of the chain, is the distance between the two links. Okay, the pins in the link. This one is somewhat around 150 millimeters or six inch, six inch between the pins. It's a very big chain. put away in the storage shed at night. You can still see one there. Then maintenance uh, has a place to look at them for their pre-operation checks. At Canada's Wonderland, we start our pre-operation checks at 5 a.m. Let's go this side. has a big sprocket like on your, your pedal bike and the chain and the chain is inside this box assembly all the way to the top there's a return wheel at the top so this drive is constantly making the chain go like this all day long gravity allows the train to leave the station it comes down around and the engineers have designed it so that the train's speed matches the speed of the chain and you get a nice engagement and the train settles in onto the chain with, with the chain dog and the chain pulls it to the top and then it falls off the chain at the top. Is that right. why all dive coasters have the uh, drop turn out of the station? Like to gain that speed or momentum it needs? Well, it, any coaster needs to match the speed of the chain. Okay. So. The ones that I know about are the same as this. Cedar Point's the reverse, I believe. Yeah. Ours turns right, ours turns left, I believe. Yes. And uh, it's all similar, but it's always designed to match the speed of the kick. Because if you don't, it's going to make a tremendous bang. If one's going faster than the other. If you be careful, we can walk this over here. I don't know. I don't know. Everything can. Maybe this isn't such a good idea. You guys. 
guys see. So what, what we're looking at is uh, the two blue pieces are the electric motor and the lift gear reducer transmission. And then there's a little diesel engine here that will, when we need to, we can use it instead of the electric motor. For whatever reason, if the train is already on the lift, we need to get it over the top and we don't have power, we have to move it over the sub in. Are they eventually going to finish the island? See if they can put it up over there? Yes. Okay. I'll probably let you know. Sometimes the, the Canadian winter uh, affects when you can do landscaping. And we had a bad spring and we couldn't get sawed, nothing like that it was happening really well. Definitely we had to make opening Definitely day. Definitely not a priority, yeah. No, we had to make opening day. Be careful. But that is cool. I mean, is this unusual? You guys you guys are the experts. The fact that there's a little elevator that goes up instead of them yeah. walking up. Yeah, that's cool. It's the only ride in the park that has it. Was that here? Like, did that, was that here no. since you caught here? That was here. It's in the other video. Oh, yeah? I don't know. So the mechanics are happy it's there. <laughs> so for that, I wasn't filming for you. Describe what this is and what it does. So this is the funicular. It's a uh, it's a maintenance vehicle and uh, it can be used to evacuate evacuate gas off. The road. Primarily a maintenance vehicle. And, uh, it's climbing all the way up. The mechanics say that's the best so thing to ever have. A funicular is it called? F-U-N, yeah. It's a fun car. Funicular. funicular. Callie, we got our word of the day. This is called a funicular. It's an inline. No, it wasn't really really fun. Like, uh, take, going up there, it's going to work. Like, uh, going up there, it's going to work. How long will it take to walk? To walk? Uh, maybe all of them. Uh, actually, it's the same speed. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It's because of how fast it will. Does anybody know what the uh, the two racks are on the lift there that look like uh, teeth? If you come back here, the uh, anti roll racks. Yeah, what's that for? So if the lift is to stop and it like loses engagement, it won't okay. like slam back down. The road. That's right. what the chain dog fits into, right? Oh, no, I don't know. Believe that. Oh, there's there's anti roll back dogs which are separate from the chain dog. So the chain, the chain is actually in between those two. And the chain you can see it's a little bit below and you can see it in the top it's enclosed but you can see the, the pins uh, of the chain come closer here. The top part goes up and the bottom part of the chain is the return. Bottom is return and the one in between is the going up. So the chain is a continuous loop. It starts from the drive here, goes up to the top reverse rocket, and then it comes back. So it's, it's continuously running. The engineers designed the ride. It is not part of the design of the ride to go backwards. All braking systems and things are forward of the train. So they have to design it so it cannot go backwards down the lift hill. So on this particular coaster, Yukon Striker, each train has 10 anti-rollback dogs that engage that rack on the track to eliminate backwards movement. You only want it to go forward. So it's a huge safety item. Okay. I don't know how much you know about the control system of the ride. Uh, roller coaster is it's driven by a control system, which in, in loose terms can be described as a computer that runs the ride. The operator just press the button, but all the safety features and everything is in the control system. And you can see the little green boxes on, on each side of the of the anti-roll bag. Those are so-called proximity switches. They are 
it's an electrical device, electronic device that senses the presence of metal. So when the train goes by, it sees it. It, it feels the presence of a train, contactless. So, so it comes very close to the frame of the train and sees it there. And that gives the information back to the control system that takes care of where each train is. There are three trains, so in order to make sure that they don't collide, they don't even come close to one another, the control system takes care of that. And each roller coaster works on a similar uh, principle, and, and that we, we call that block system. So there are, each roller coaster track is divided in several blocks, nine, ten, whatever, and then each block of the, on the track can be occupied by only one train. The control system wouldn't allow it, or no matter what you do, the control system shouldn't allow you to make two, two trains come close to each other in fly. And that's all uh, obtained by, by this uh, proximity switches that give information back to the control system, letting it know where the trains are. And then for safety reasons, every single morning, on every single roller coaster, these proximity switches are checked by our guys. And they are checked by uh, simply trying to hold the system. What they do is they go to this proximity switch with a piece of metal and, and try to trick it and say, I'm the train, I'm here, although the train is somewhere else. And the system must generate an error message. If it doesn't, that means something is wrong. But most of the time, or all the time, the system will actually consider that to be a, a, a nonsense information and generate us an error message and stop the further operation. So we have to reset it. And that's how we check all of these switches to make sure that they work properly. Well, I can't really say what the max capacity, but I've been here when there was in excess of 60,000. I see. That's the crowd. And your title? It's very crowd. Project engineer. Project engineer, okay. That's a lot. Yeah, that's. 30,000 is starting to get busy. 62,000 is. Uh, this is the, isn't this the uh, highest attend uh, seasonal attended seasonal park like other than like not very far and like the it, parks. It has, I believe, that it's held that. In our group of, of parks, uh, Cedar, I, Cedar Fair Park, Cedar Fair. Yeah. we are the highest seasonally. I don't think that's season. nationwide. I think that's within our. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's comparing apples to apples, comparing yeah. you to other Cedar Fair parks. See where it says Roth Air Day on the top. That's that's a um, bear. This this is a bear. It's what they call a slurring. It's a large bear. So the whole wheel assembly. Spin it right around. You can spin it here because there is no track. The, the train is on a on a bank on a on a storage uh, track. And there is no track with guides to guide the wheel. This is the track to go. So what I usually show kids when, when we come here is to, to, to just take a look at how how design of this works to be safe. It's got two running wheels, it's these larger ones, two side wheels and two upstop wheels on each wheel carrier. And each wheel carrier is opposed to wheel carrier on the other side. So when there are two track pipes, this wheel carrier is actually part of the track pipe. So the coaster cannot go anywhere but where the track pipe. And additionally,
additional feature is this um, grass pads here. They are meant as a safety feature. If a wheel wheel, a running wheel breaks, the whole thing will fall, but it will not fall on the track, it will just fall for the distance between here and there, and it will not allow guests to be unsafe. These, these brake fits have to fit in a mag, magnetic uh, eddy current brake. Uh, so the train has to maintain a certain distance from the track. So these pads here, these skids, would keep it so that this brake fit still goes inside the brake truck. Uh, under the lift hill. Under the lift hill, there's a, uh, it looks like another track and it's hanging down off those beams. What do you think that That's is? That's the chain coming back up. That's the chain. What, what's problematic about that? How do you maintain it? Closed. Now look up there. You can maintain both the upper and lower chain trough from on top of the, of the box. So, this one you can. You have to get a crane because the chain slides on uh, UHMW, which is a really expensive and slippery plastic. And, uh, the way they designed that, they, they added maintenance expenses. So they just got smarter on how to do it now? Yeah. After this one, uh, Leviathan. Leviathan and this one, it's all together in, on the box beam. Somebody at B&M won an innovation award for coming up with that different way. Or somebody complained. <laughs> more like that. Somebody got fired for doing somebody it that way. Like, what the heck are you doing? You're killing us.